Last week, I did a video on a Roth IRA, and I suggested that if a 22-year-old would invest uh, $6,000 a year into a Roth IRA and invest in aggressively in the growth companies, they could accumulate $3 billion by the time they got uh, 62. And I got to thinking, well, Kerry, what's your limit? What can you accumulate? You've, you're going to turn 78 in a month. What's your limit? And so I sat down and I said, well, okay. Okay, if I got is that aggressive with what I've got right now, what would be my 20-year plan? And I figured out I can accumulate $323 million on my 20-year plan. And I, so I, I did a chart on it, and I figured it out, and I want to show you, based on what I got right now and how I'm investing, I'm going to accumulate over $323 million. The only question is, can I live to 97 years old? I don't know. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. Okay, so how am I going to accumulate this 323 million in 20 years that I can then do with what I want or endow a, a building at Ball State like David Letterman did and get my name on it. What, well, how would I do that? Well, I think I have to follow my mantra and that is never invest in the present but invest in the future. And I think the future companies based on my knowledge now and what I've learned over the last several years is that I'm in good shape with Amazon, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. And right now, I've got about $98,000 in Amazon, 103000 in Apple, and 66000 in Google, and 48000 in Amazon. So, if I do take the, the chart that I built last week based on uh, if a 22-year-old would invest in those four stocks... And, um, and and leave it for 40 years, they'd end up with $3 billion. Well, I don't have 40 years. I got maybe 10, maybe 20. And so I said, well, okay, let's take my numbers, uh, my 98, 103, 66, and 48, and then commit to putting another 6,000 into uh, them cumulatively, that, that what I'm asking the 22-year-olds to do, 6000 a year, cumulative into the four stocks, what would they grow to if they achieved the lesser of what they've achieved averaged annual return since their IPO or average annual return since the 2008 real estate crisis, the last big dip that we had. So if I take the, leader, the uh, lesser of those two and say that's what I'm going to achieve on my current investment plus $6,000 over the next 20 years, what am I going to end up with? And I, I, again, I went to an Excel spreadsheet and here it is. And uh, it came up with uh, $323 million. Is that realistic? Well, I, I guess, and, and it's a question that I ask myself, is it realistic? Is it possible that Amazon, Microsoft, um, Apple, and Google could become irrelevant? I don't think so, but is it possible? Well, yeah, it is. I used to work for Polaroid. Yeah, I, I sat down in 1977, I believe it was, with Dr. Edwin Land. He was the founder of the Land Camera. Uh, and in essence, what that was, was instant photography. Up until then, Eastman Kodak had a brownie camera, and, and you'd, you'd take a picture on film, and then you'd take it into a processor at a drugstore or a grocery store and come back a week later, and they will ha would have printed your images off your film onto paper at a photo processor plant, and you'd pay for it, and that's how you got your pictures. Well, Dr. Land's daughter asked him one time, how come I have to wait for my pictures? And Dr. Land said, I don't know. So what he basically did was take that chemical process of it, developing film and pulling colors out of paper and did it in the camera. And that became the Polaroid camera. And uh, it, it was kind of messy and it, was, it, it wasn't the best of pictures. But then at the end, they had the SX-70 and that was phenomenal. And I remember asking, I sat with Dr. Land, I believe it was in 77 for dinner, and I said, Dr. Land, what's the future of photography? And he explained to me 
that in the future, he said, a carry a student will go to class and he'll take something out of his pocket about the size of a pen. And when the professor does his work on the blackboard, yeah, we had blackboards then, uh, he'll, he will go up to the, the board and he'll take his pen and he'll take a picture of what is on that blackboard. And then he'll take it back to his dorm room and he'll put it on the device. And the device will project that picture in, in an image. Whoa! Okay, what did he just describe to me? I think he described this to me. It's a little bit bigger than a pen, but he had the, and that was in 77. Polaroid went bankrupt because Dr. Land died. They didn't go to see his vision and they went bankrupt. I believe it was in about 1998 or 202 or something like that. The same thing happened to Eastman Kodak. In fact, Eastman Kodak, created the first digital camera, and the board of directors said, we don't want anything to do with that. We're a chemical and paper company. What about what about uh, Sears Roebuck? Well, the number one realist, or, or retailer in the world, they, they used to send us a catalog this big, and I mean, you, you could go through there and find anything, get on the phone, call them up and say, send me two of those, and, and they'd put it in the mail and send it to you. Well, what is that? What's that? That's Amazon.com. But Sears Roebuck had it. They had it in their hands. They had it all organized. They had it all set up. They didn't know how to digitize it. Okay? So it is, is it real? And there's more. Uh, Xerox. Remember, well, you didn't used to take copies on <laughs> of something. Just, it was Xerox it. Much as today, it's Google it. Or, or search it on, on Google. So, can they stay relevant? <laughs> well, we know that Polaroid, Eastman, Sears, and Xerox did not, so it's possible they cannot. But then I look at it and say, are they relevant today? And are they doing things out of their moat that, in fact, will increase their opportunities to stay alive? Well, I would. let's start with Apple. Number one, they have the number one brand in the world. Are they developing uh, um, autonomous vehicles? Yeah, they say in two years they'll have an electric vehicle and it will be an autonomous vehicle. Are they getting into the medical field? Yeah, I think they own uh, the Apple Watch and I think they own wearables. Uh, are they getting into healthcare? Yeah, Tim Cook said in January of 2020, of 2019, you look back from 1935 at, 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 at Apple and ask, what is the most important contribution? And he says, it's going to be healthcare. So are they moving forward? I think they are. Amazon, yeah, they just bought a battery company. They, they bought a pharmaceutical company uh, or, or delivery of, of drugs. They just bought a doctor company so that organizations, corporations can introduce uh, primary care doctors to their employees and they're organizing the healthcare business. So are they going into the future? What about Microsoft? Oh, they're that, that, they're that software company with Windows and Excel. Wait a second. They also own Xbox. They're, they're in the gaming. They're, they're, they're going to be a leader in the metaverse. So am I worried about these companies becoming another Xerox, another Polaroid, another Eastman Kodak, another Sears Roba? No, I'm not. I believe they are in the future. Do I believe they can achieve the level of return that they have in the past? And that is somewhere around an average of 33% of a year? Yes, I do. I certainly do. On an average, I think they will. So if I can take my $313,000 distributed between Amazon, Apple, Google, and Microsoft and add $6,000 to it a year, which I can do uh, for the next 20 years, I project that if I'm still alive, and that's truly the question, that's truly the question, can I be, can I live to 97 years of age? Yeah, I can, because the other investment that I have a substantial amount in is genome therapy, genome sequencing, genome editing, and that's going to take what historically tells me is going to kill me out of my body. What's that, Carrie? That's cancer. Everybody in my family dies of cancer. So if I can take that out of my body, and I have a strong heart, I get out and run, and I'm the fastest 
uh, 75 to 80 year old in the state of Alabama in the 50, the 100, and the 200 meter. And if I, if I really gut it out, I can win the 400 meter as well. So I, I got a strong heart. Um, I've had a little problem with my prostate, but we got that under control. So cancer is my, is my killer. So I'm invested in these other things that are going to keep me alive. So that tells me, uh-huh, I know how to invest my money in uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google to get my 30% or greater return on an annualized basis. That's a done deal, okay? The only thing that has to happen to make this 20-year plan come together is Carrie live 20 years. And I've turned that over to uh, CRISPR and Editus and Caribou and Beam and Illumina. They're, that's their responsibility to get me to that uh, 97, 98-year-old mark. Okay, I don't know if I want to go. I don't know if I want to put three. How old are you, Carrie? Well, I'm 100 years old. That's a one and two zeros. I don't know if I'm going to make it that far. But I honestly believe that if I will stay attuned to these companies, make sure they develop the artificial intelligence, the machine learning, um, and, and the general intelligence, and they then uh, are the ones who get into quantum computing, I got no doubt. And, and as, the, as the thumbnail says, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I am. I am. I'm not worried. The only thing that really has me worried right now is two guys, Vladimir and Xi Jinping. Um, I, I, I just see them, I, I see them be, being some goofballs and, say, and, and getting their, you know, mine is bigger than yours in, in front of themselves. Um, I think we need to put some women in, in head of these offices and, and maybe we can get over this macho, uh, I'm going to go invade this country and take over because that's my, my right. And this is what I'm, why not just go knock on the door and say, hey, uh, we need something you got. Maybe we got something you need. Can we work it out? You ever think about that? Just go knock on your neighbor's door and say, hey, can we work together on this? All right. That's something, hey, this, may, maybe I ought to get into politics too. What do you think? Hey, I'm going to talk to you again tomorrow about this. Um. I want you to, again, think about never invest in the present. Invest in the future. You can't make any money on companies based on what they made last week. You got to make money based on what they're going to make two years from now and how they're going to change the world you live in. Is Procter & Gamble going to change the world you live in? Can they make Tide any better? Is, is, is Ford Motor Company going to change the world you live in? Hell, they got so many recalls, they're lucky to still be in business. Now, will the electric vehicle change the world you live in? Yeah, okay. But I'm sorry, car companies don't make any money. I don't invest in them. All right. I, I, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. Just keep dollar cost averaging and you too can accumulate $323 million before you climb into your coffin. Talk to you again tomorrow.